What is up guys, Thunderbow here, and today I'm actually bringing you something a little different. This is going to be a tutorial on how to make some really awesome thumbnails. Now, uh, first, let me just get some of the stuff that I need out of here, so. Okay, anyway, so about a year ago, I uploaded a video about how to make some decent beginner level custom thumbnails. And I never recorded the end or the part two video because there wasn't enough people who wanted it and now that the video has well over 3,000 views it's coming up to 4,000 views a lot of people are telling me hey you should really make this part two video and that's exactly what I'm going to be doing today so if you haven't seen part one of my custom thumbnail tutorial I really suggest doing that because it goes over some of the basics of making thumbnails and really in order to do thumbnails that are a lot better you're going to need to know the basics so I'm not going to go through installing t tutorials and like how to find stuff and how to what to search for and how to install custom fonts because if you watch the first video that's all explained there so I'm going to start out by taking a picture and dragging it into here and this is actually for a thumbnail that I'm going to be, uh, this is a thumbnail that I'm going to be uploading, uh, for a video that will be very soon. Um, it's a review of the Fallen Kingdom ported map. So, um, basically, if you guys have, like, a, uh, custom map or something that you recorded and you want to make a thumbnail for it, just take a screenshot of it, uh, email it to yourself, drag it into GIMP. It's that simple, and if you don't, you can always look up something like a Minecraft wallpaper and find one that looks the greatest, download it, and import it into GIMP. So that's really like the first step in making something that looks a little more advanced, having a background that stands out. Now, what I'm going to want to do here is I'm going to want to add a filter that's going to blur the picture so that way it's kind of more of a background thing than foreground because you want the text that you're adding and you want the pocket edition logo at least for me because I'm doing a pocket edition video um, I want the pocket edition logo to stand out so I'm going to make this uh, a little more blurred so that way it sort of sets back and your attention's more focused on the text and then it will go to the background so I'm going to do this I'm going to go to filters blur and then Gaussian blur now I always do a Gaussian blur of about 17. You can do more, you can do less, but when you hit OK, the picture will pixelate and it will like blur quite a bit, and this looks pretty fine. So now I'm going to open up the Pocket Edition logo, which I have right here, and I'm going to copy it and then paste it onto the uh, onto the image. Now first, I just want to see what the image size is. Oh, okay, so it's actually a little smaller than I wanted, so. I'm going to scale the image up to about 1280 by 720. Scale that. That looks a little better. So I'm going to paste the Pocket Edition logo, drag it up to about where I want. Now there's this new tool that I'm going to be introducing to you guys, and it's the Alignment tool. Basically, you click this little box with four arrows around it, and then click the item that you want to center. In this case, it's the Pocket Edition logo. All of these options will light up, and then I can click Align Center of Target, and the Pocket Edition logo moved over a little bit. So now it's exactly in the center of the picture, slightly down from the top, because I don't want the picture or the logo to be at the very top, otherwise it will get cut off, because the YouTube player uh, does shrink the size of thumbnails just a tiny bit, so keeping it slightly from the top is pretty good. Now we're going to be adding some text, and there's a few more advanced tricks that I could throw in here that I'm going to be showing you guys, because you don't want text that's just going to be, let's just say, right, hello, and then I'll make this white so that way it stands out a little bit, I'll center that, and raise it all the way up. So, that really doesn't stand out, you want something that's going to have a border around it, something that allows your viewers to detect what it says, and it's legible. Because the thumbnail that I showed you guys, the beginner level thumbnail, it's really not too legible. You want something that's going to be legible. So I'm going to delete this text here, and I'm going to write Fallen K 
kingdom replica. That's what I'm going to write on the thumbnail. So I'm going to, you don't even need to change the color because we're getting to that. So I'm going to change the font to Pilsen Plocket, which is the font that I like using when I want something that's a little more simplistic. I'm going to scale this up as much as I can. It's a little too much, but I'll drag this up just so that, okay, that's actually pretty good. But this is in black. You want something that stands out. You want something that has a border. Well, over here, you have the menu that says Layers, Gradients. Uh, you don't want to X this out, and if you can, or if you did X this out, um, I don't know how to get it back. So I would suggest uh, looking through all these menus if you lose this screen. But you want this menu that says Layers, Gradients, and it has all of the layers that you've put on so far. And right here is Fallen Kingdom. And this is the text layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this little icon here that says duplicate. So I duplicated that. Now what I want to do is I want to make sort of like a shadow. So uh, I'll pull up an example right now. If I go to here, thumbnail, YouTube thumbnails, I want something that has a shadow. For example, you could see here how here's the text itself, and then right behind it is kind of like a duplicated version of text layer and it's faded it has like a background to it you want something like that so um, what I'm going to do actually hang on a second there's a better example somewhere around here ah, right here so you can see how there's this shadowy background in the back of all this text you want something that looks like that so in order to do this uh, once you have the text layer duplicated you're going to click and drag the corner of the text layer just slightly so now it's a little offset and I'll do this a little more just so it gives a little more of a effect to it now I'm going to duplicate the layer again and now I'm going to right click on the layer that says fallen kingdom number two and then I'm going to go down to alpha two selection here's where you add the color I'm going to add a gradient color to it you can do a solid color if you want but basically what you do is you go to Blend Tool, which is the gradient fill, and you select the gradient color that you want. Now I'm going to go with the yellow-orange. It's kind of generic, but it suits its purpose here. So now what I do is I click and drag however I want it. Now you can add effects to the gradient layer. For example, you could do a radial effect, meaning it will start from the center and it will fan out towards the edges. Or you could do bilinear, which adds a stripe in the center. You could see that yellowish stripe, and then it goes to orange on both sides. And I actually like how this looks. So it's colorful. It has that backdrop that you want. But it's not perfect, because if you look over here, it doesn't have a border to it. Well, this is what you do for the border. You see the layer that says Fallen Kingdom number one? You're going to right-click on that. Alpha to Selection. Now you're going to go to select and then border. Now this menu is going to pop up that says border selection. I always increase the border by 5 pixels and then feather the border. So actually, you know what, for this case I might do 6 just to give it a little extra. And if it doesn't look good then I can always um, I can always go back and redo it. But let's hit OK. And then I'm going to do command comma on a Mac which uh, fills with the background color and this looks pretty good it has that border and it, I'm pretty fond of this thumbnail I think this would be pretty good and there's one thing that I want to do before I put it on a video and that would be to make this background text a little faded so what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to uh, go to the very bottom Fallen Kingdom text layer alpha to selection that Oh wait, no, I'm sorry, you don't alpha selection. You just um just click this layer. Then you're gonna go to filters, blur, and you can keep blurring it. As a matter of fact, repeat blur is command F. So I'll keep doing command F. And you could uh you could slightly see how the more that I do command F, the more faded that background area gets. And that's exactly what I want. This thumbnail looks pretty good, and once the video is uploaded, I will uh I will use this thumbnail. But there's one more thing that I want to do. 
and that's going to be to add a vignette effect. Now, a vignette is kind of like the uh, darkened edges that you have around a thumbnail, and uh, let's see if I could pull up an example of a vignette effect on a thumbnail. Right here is a perfect example of a vignette effect. You can see these edges are darker, and it's kind of like fading out to a black-ish color towards the edges. And I want a vignette effect on here because this is almost too bright. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select the ellipse select tool. And this will allow you to select an area that is circular. Now I'm going to minimize all these menus because right now I don't need them. Basically, when creating the vignette effect, you don't want the circle to be out here. Uh, you want the circle to be somewhat on the thumbnail. So, for example, you can see that the circle edges out here, it sort of like goes inside the thumbnail. Uh, if you can understand what I'm saying, sort of, uh, you want this circle to cut into the thumbnail because this part will be the one that turns black and then it will fade into it. You don't want the thumb, uh, the circle going all the way out here because it won't have an effect. But basically, uh, just adjust it to about the appropriate size that you want. I'm gonna do something like this, then like this, then like this. Actually, maybe a little further out. No, I don't. Okay, that's actually good. So now I have the circle selected around the edge of the thumbnail. Now what I'm going to do, there's this little button on the very, very bottom left of GIMP, and it says Toggle Quick Mask. And if you go from the center to the left, all the way to the left, and then down, you'll see this little checkered-ish square. That's the Toggle Quick Mask button, and you want to do that. So I'm going to Toggle Quick Mask, and you can see the thumbnail edges all turn red. That's perfect. And don't worry, everything's fine. So now I'm going to bring back up the Layers Gradient menu, and I'm going to, uh, oh wait, hang on a second, did I mess this up? I hope I didn't. But I'm going to go to Add Layer Mask, and then Channel Quick Mask. Oh, I did this perfect, fine. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, I thought that I messed up, but I didn't. So basically, once you have the Quick Mask on, you're going to want to click the very bottom of the uh, the very bottom of the list of layers and that would be the uh, background image in this case it says fallen kingdom background uh, all the ones above it are the text layers you don't want that you want the original image now you're going to click on that and then you're going to right click ugh, right click and then you're gonna go to add layer mask and then you're going to want to make sure that you have channel and then quick mask selected when you click add it will cut out the remaining portions that were red, and then behind it will be a checkerboard look. You per This is fine. You want this to be there. Now you're going to go to Filters, then Blur, Gaussian Blur, and I'm going to do something pretty big, about 625 would be good. When you click OK, it's going to blur the entire image, and that's exactly what you want. So now, we're going to go over to here and we're going to right click on the layers gradient menu then we're going to go to new layer and then foreground color make sure the foreground color is black because otherwise this will not look well once you have a foreground layer created you're going to click and drag this below the original picture and now that you have dragged it below the picture the um, the vignette effect is completed. You can turn off Quick Mask, and the thumbnail is completed. So this is how you make a more advanced thumbnail. I hope this helps YouTubers who are growing and want to improve the look of your thumbnails and improve the quality of your videos. If this video has helped you, please leave a like, favorite, comment below with your thoughts, subscribe for more videos, and I'll see you next time.